There's this, this huge mentality that we have, uh, especially in America, I found uh, this like starving artist mentality. You know that that you know in order to be an artist, to be an author, to be a writer, you have to be broke. You have to be poor. And you know the funny thing is, it, if you look at reality, it's the furthest thing from the truth. Because you know, look at like J.K. Rowling is a billionaire from one book series. You know. And yeah, she's someone who stands out, but there's many, many people who have become multimillionaires from writing books. Uh, and more and more of them now with self-publishing are doing it much and much faster. But this whole idea that you have to be a starving artist is complete BS, basically. And you can earn a full-time income, a serious income, even become wealthy through uh, writing books, through really any form of art. Welcome to the Borderless Podcast, your guide to traveling, investing, and living beyond borders, where we talk about living the life that you want to live where you want to live it. From beautiful San Miguel de Allende, smack in the middle of Mexico. With your hosts, Jonathan Lockwood and James Guzman. Welcome to the Borderless Podcast, traveling, investing, and living beyond borders. This is that podcast where we talk about all of the stuff it takes to get you beyond your borders. And uh, I'm Jonathan Lockwood here in San Miguel de Allende, as always. James Guzman is not in San Miguel right now. Where are you, James? I am in Antigua, Guatemala. Uh, it's a beautiful little city, uh, very much like San Miguel. So, Is that uh, right? But now, yeah. previously, you were where? You were in Guatemala, but not in Antigua. Yeah, I went, well, I went to Guatemala City. I was at the MIT GSW. It's a global startup workshop. Absolutely incredible. Um, some of the speakers that they had were uh, just monumental. There was the founder of Indiegogo, the founder of Duolingo, a lot of uh, venture capitalists that had started a multitude of companies. So it was very inspiring, very interesting. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward to having a lot of these people on the podcast and seeing how we can uh, work some of the things that they're doing into into what we're doing here. So Well, that's fantastic. And so mm-hmm. you were there, you were having a good time, you met some friends, and then you decided to up and blast off for Antigua. Yeah. So Antigua is only about, uh, you know, they say 45 minutes, but it seemed like a shorter drive than that. But it's very close and uh, very different from Guatemala City. Uh, it's it's a very uh, nice, you know, nice city. It's um, a lot of uh, expats, seems like a lot of money here. And, uh, you know, I look forward to getting getting into uh, some of the opportunities and other things that they have around here. I uh, currently am staying in a Airbnb. I, I found this Airbnb. It's only $17 and it's right in the centro or maybe four blocks from the center. And it includes three meals a day and uh, it's, you know, king size bed. And it's so, uh, it's amazing the type of deals you can find, you know, when on Airbnb and these types of uh, websites when you're traveling around. Great. So you're enjoying yourself. When do you expect to be back in San Miguel? I will be flying back on Thursday. All right. Very good. So you'll yep. be back for our next uh, our next borderless podcast. Absolutely. Uh, James had found a young man by the name of Tom Corson Knowles, who is an entrepreneur and author. And we've been taking a look at some of his stuff and we thought we'd have him on the podcast. Let me read his bio. Tom Corson Knowles is a serial entrepreneur, blogger, and international best-selling author. He started his first business at age 13 manufacturing SAD lamps, seasonal affective disorder lamps, out of his father's garage. By the time he graduated from Indiana University Kelly School of Business at age 22, he was earning a full-time income from his first successful business, which he started in his dorm room. Tom then decided to share the keys to success that he'd learned along his journey to becoming a financially independent entrepreneur through his books, videos, and seminars. Today, he teaches new and established authors and writers how to achieve incredible success by writing and selling e-books on Amazon Kindle. He is the founder of ebookpublishingschool.com, a free video training program for any author who wants to learn how to successfully write, publish, and market their own e-books. He's also the founder of TCK Publishing, the premier e-book publishing firm that is leading the industry in providing advanced marketing support for its clients. His best-selling books include Secrets of the Six-Figure Author, The Kindle Publishing Bible, Facebook for Business Owners, How to Make Money with Twitter, and The Kindle Writing Bible. Welcome, Tom Corson Knowles. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to be here. You bet. So, Tom, just tell me, where are you, where are you from originally, anyway? Uh, I grew up in Indiana. 
spent uh, about 20 years of my life there. And then after college, I decided, hey, I don't like winter anymore, so I'm going to move somewhere warm. (laughs) Oh, fantastic. I didn't realize you were living in Hawaii. That's great. So let's talk briefly about that first business. How did you come to manufacture seasonal affective disorder lamps in your father's garage? Yeah, it's a funny story. Well, um, my parents are both medical doctors. And so in business, you know, it's all about your relationships, who you know, it's your network, right? And so my parents had this network of people that they knew who had seasonal affective disorder. It's very common in the North, very common in Indiana. Um, It's basically, if you don't know what it is, it's basically in the wintertime when there's not enough sunlight, when the sun is so far away um, from the earth, you don't get enough um, sunlight in your eyes and your body. And uh, basically, it it causes all kinds of hormonal disruptions in in your body and your brain and causes kind of depression and, uh, you know, all kinds of bad feelings and stuff like that. And it's actually a clinical disorder. So a simple solution to that is just have a light bulb on your desk, in your house somewhere, on your body um, that uh, mimics the sun's light. And so that's what a sad lamp is. And so um, my dad is also a hobbyist woodworker. So together, he kind of taught me how to do woodworking. And we decided to create these lamps together and selling them to um, the people in their network. Um, so that, that's how I got started in business. But I realized early on in that business that, you know, I don't like manual labor. <laughs> and uh, and it's not that I don't enjoy I mean, I do enjoy it. I don't want to say I don't like it. But, you know, doing it eight hours a day, 40 hours a week uh, is not something I enjoy. So, you know, every once in a while, it's great to, you know, work with my hands and do some hard work. But um, in terms of actually earning an income and a career, it's not, it's not the path I wanted to take. Right. I'm with you, Tom. So that's very interesting. 13 years old. What a great idea. Now, I want to come back to stuff like that. Let's jump right into this for people. We're talking about your success in the world of self-publishing and Kindle books and stuff. So why don't we jump right into this? How did you first get involved in writing Kindle books? Well, I first started writing my first book when I was 19. I was in uh, business school at Indiana University, Kelly School of Business, and I, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was the first book, first personal development book I ever read. Up until that point, I only really read like novels and textbooks for school and stuff. And, uh, and I read the book and it just totally changed my life. It changed my view about money and the world and business and just everything. It was just one of those, just, you know, there's like my life before I read the book and there's like my life after I read the book. You know, it was just a really big turning point in my life. And so after that, I started, you know, studying everything I could get my hands on. Jim Rohn, uh, everything about personal development, self-help, how to start a business. And I got so inspired by all these books I was reading, I decided to write my own book, which was really, for me, it was just a personal manifesto of what I thought it, took, it meant to live a successful life. So, you know, what kind of person I wanted to be, what kind of life I wanted to live. And one of the big things for me, uh, and I think that really resonates with you know the Borderless podcast and the audience, is that I wanted to live a lifestyle that I could do whatever I wanted to do, whenever I wanted to do it, wherever I wanted to do it, with whoever I wanted to be with. And I realized that you know if I stayed in business school and went to on Wall Street, which is you know the dream of almost every business school student is to go to Wall Street and be an investment banker and make a lot of money. The problem is you're working 100 hours a week and you're basically a corporate slave. You know, you're in these golden handcuffs. Yeah, you make a lot of money, but you have no control of your life. Uh, and that really scared me. And so I wanted, I wanted something different from my life. I wanted something different. And I realized that the only way to have that kind of freedom, what you can do anything you want to do, go anywhere in the world, be with anyone you want to be with, is to have a business. And specifically a business that you own and you control. You don't have to worry about investors. You don't have to worry about you know, other people telling you what to do, but it's really a lifestyle business. And so that's what I set out creating. And, and uh, you know, there's something called passive income. A lot of people talk about passive income. I'm not sure if that's the best word for it, but basically it's, it's income that comes in every month, whether you continue to work or not. And so I just studied while, well, you know, uh, in the day I was going to business school and at night I was studying, okay, how can I figure out ways to earn income and earn residual income that's going to come in month after month after month, whether I continue to work or not. And so that's what I did. All right. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. A a lot of kids maybe had some sort of little business when maybe it was a lemonade stand or something like that, but they don't necessarily go on to become an entrepreneur. So there just came some point in your life when you realized creating something for yourself was better than working a job. And that didn't appear to be, I mean, you did go to business school, right? So when did it really strike you? Uh, It was around the age 19. So when I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and also another, another big uh, turning point was uh, I got a call from a classmate. Um, so I was in an honors program in a business school. And in that program, you have to do an internship. 
And so a lot of people do that internship in the summer after their freshman year. And so a lot of friends went and one friend, she called me and she was just in tears on the phone. She was doing an investment banking internship and, and on Wall Street and she was in tears. She was saying, you know, I'm working 100, over 100 hours a week. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I have no time for social life. I can't work out. You know, she was just in, absolutely miserable. And I realized, you know, from that phone phone call, like if I don't change the path I'm on, my life is going to suck. You know, it's not going to be the life I really want to live. And so I was so, you know, scared of that potential future that I, uh, you know, I was just basically, I felt like I had no other choice but to, to really start a business and to figure out how to make it on my own. And uh, and so publishing was, wasn't was really, at that point in time, I was writing books, but I, I you know, it wasn't uh, really a business model for me. I was just writing the book, the first book, because I, you know, it was more like writing my own goals and you know, writing my beliefs about what it meant to live a good life. But um, what happened was I shared that book with, you know, some friends and some family, and they, they really encouraged me to get it published traditionally. And they said, you know, this book is amazing. you got to get this out there. And so, you know, I tried that route, and I submitted to all kinds of agents. And, you know, the funny thing is a lot of people talk about all the rejections they get uh, when they submit books to agents, but I didn't even get rejection letters. Like, I didn't <laughs> nothing. I mean, there was just no response. I didn't get an email back, no phone calls, nothing. It was just like sending sending my manuscript out into this void, my book proposal into a void. So uh, it was really discouraging. So I basically gave up on that dream for six years of writing books. But um, all the while during that time, even though I wasn't pursuing getting it published anymore, uh, I was still writing, you know, just for free time. Uh, in my free time, it's really like a hobby for me. You know, some people like collecting stamps. Some people like surfing. I, you know, I like to write. Uh, and I feel like it helps me really think. I think that one of the really cool things about writing is that in order to be a good writer, you have to be a good communicator. In order to be a good communicator, you have to be a good thinker. Mm -hmm. You have to have, you know, you have to think thoroughly about your ideas and what you're trying to communicate to people. And uh, and you know, especially in business, when you're trying to you know compete with businesses all over the world, um, it really helps if you have some kind of way to clarify your thoughts and to really get clear on, on what it is you're trying to do and how you're going to go ahead and do that. So writing was really valuable for me, even though. I never, you know, even really considered, I, I never could get it published. It was still uh, a very good thing for me. But what happened was about four years ago, a friend of mine just offhand mentioned, hey, why don't you just go self-publish your book on Kindle? And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's, that's a crazy idea. Um, but, you know, I thought about it that night and I was like, oh, wait, maybe that actually is a good idea. Well, let's talk about that, Tom, because, I mean, there was a time when self-publishing was a bit unrealistic, wasn't it? What was it like in, in other times? <laughs> I mean, it was horrible. So like, it was like the worst business model ever. Like, so before eBooks, if you wanted to self-publish, what you had to do is you had to order like a minimum of 5,000 books, which meant you had to, you had to get $25,000 minimum investment to basically print your own books. And it doesn't count the cost of editing and layout and all that stuff. Um, so that's just the cost to order your books, right? So you get 25 grand of inventory sitting in your garage, right? Because you, you don't have an office or a warehouse. You're just sitting in your garage. And every time you sell a book, what you have to do is you have to go out, you have to find that customer, get their order, you have to find some way to bill them or collect the cash or cash the check. Then you have to go and get uh, an envelope or a package. You got to put the book in the package. You got to sign the book. You got to put their name and address on it. You got to go to the post office. You got to mail it out. I mean, it was just like it was like the worst business model ever. Uh, and you know, there were people doing it, and some people like you know, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad, started out that way, selling books uh, in the back of his car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now he's, you know, sold millions of dollars worth of books. And so he's very, very successful. So uh, it's not that it's, it's a model that doesn't work at all, but it's, it's a very difficult model. Right. But, you know, the thing is that there was a time when you had few options and then things changed. What would you say, long about when did things begin to change to the point where self-publishers saw that as a realistic option? I mean, it really changed in 2009 with Kindle. Um, mm -hmm. So Kindle, I think, came out in 2007. But then what happened was in 2009, they really opened it up. It became more mainstream. Uh, millions of people were buying Kindles that Christmas. And they also opened up their um, KDP program for authors. They made it really, really easy for self-published authors to, to just basically all you do is you go to their website, you sign up for an account, you upload your book file, you upload your book cover, you write your description, you tell them what your title is, you give them the, all the, basically the metadata or information about your book, and you click publish and your book's published. So it's, it's just so much easier than it's ever been before. It's all digital now. And even with print books, you know, you can do print on demand now. So... Uh, if you don't know what print-on-demand is, it's basically where you send your digital files to a printer, 
And every time a customer orders your book on Amazon, for instance, uh, they go ahead, they print your book for you, they collect from the customer, uh, they bill the customer, they ship it out to the customer, and they just send you, you know, your, your royalties from the earnings uh, at the end of every month. Boy, a far cry from what people used to have to do decades ago. That's a dream. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a totally different business model today. It's a totally different world. And that's why you know, a lot of authors who are, aren't paying attention to what's going on in the industry or you know, still have this you know, notion that self-publishing is a bad thing, that self-publishing is not respectable, it's not profitable. Uh, but the truth is, when you look at most self-published authors, you look at a self-published author – uh, and a traditionally published author selling the same amount of books, the self-published author is earning way more in royalties. Um, because when you self-publish an ebook, for instance, you get 70% royalties. Uh, when, you, when you publish the traditional publisher, you're lucky to get 10, 15% royalties. Mm-hmm. So you're earning seven times more with your ebooks uh, when you self-publish versus with a traditional publisher. Absolutely. You know, I had a friend back in the Phoenix area, a woman who has been writing for many years, prolific author of, I can't remember what she used to call it. It was like suburban fantasy romance or something like that. And uh, she had many, many books out there. She had a traditional publisher and did very well. And at some point it struck her. She changed her model, doubled her income. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, fantastic. So the first book, you said you wrote your first book when you were 19. Was there any success from that? I mean, I would say the original success from that was, you know, the learning process it, it, it goes, you go through when you write a book. I mean, I'm a prolific reader. I read like five books a week on average for the past 10 years. I mean, I, I love to read. And it's almost all nonfiction, business, marketing, psychology, history, philosophy, all that stuff. But I can honestly say that writing a book is equal to, to reading 300 books or more because you're going to learn so much through the researching process, through the 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 process of just writing the book, you're going to learn so much more about the topic. Um, and I'm talking about nonfiction writing, obviously. Um, and I think that that was the original payoff for it. But in terms of financially, I mean, there was no payoff until, you know, six years later when I finally self-published the book. And then then I actually started earning royalties from it. Mm, very good. So your first your first book that you were attempting to, to get, you know, traditional publishing from, you were praying for a rejection letter, didn't even get that. And then a friend told you, why not, why not go the Kindle route? So what was your second book? What was the subject of it? What was it about? Uh, well, that book was called Rules of the Rich. <laughs> well, it's now called Rules of the Rich. It was, it was okay. a different title before. Um, and that was kind of like the personal uh, book about you know, what it means to be successful or what it means to live a successful life uh, and how you create success in your life. Because uh, to me, a success is about way more than just how much money you make. Everyone's different. We all have different values. You know, so some of us, you know, really value uh, children and we want lots of kids and we want a big family life. Some of us love traveling and, you know, we don't want to be attached to our relationship. We just like to travel all over the world. And, you know, some of us love uh, yachts and we want a yacht or whatever. Right. So people have different values. Uh, And so for me, really, the premise of that book was, look, you know, figure out what's really important to you. Right. Not what society says is important, not what your parents think are important for you. But what do you really, really want from your life? And get really crystal clear on what that is. And then let's work on some strategies and tools and systems that you can go ahead and actually get that and create that. But I think the biggest thing that holds people back and keeps them from really living a fulfilled, successful life is that we have all these shoulds, you know, from society, from our parents, from maybe negative relatives, people we're with that say, you know, you should do this. Don't quit your job, you know, because you got it made. You're so lucky with the job that you have. You know, even though you want to go ahead and write a book and be an author, you really shouldn't do that. You should stay with what you're doing because it's safe, you know. And I think that's a big mistake to make because the, 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 the riskiest thing you can do is try to play safe, right? Like, you know, life is short. We're not, we're not going to survive this life, you know. It's just a simple fact. So, you know, you've only got so much time here on this planet. You might as well make it count and do what you really, really want to do with your life. And that was really the reason I started writing the books and, started publishing it, so I wanted to get that message out to the world. You know, that, that subject comes up so much on the Borderless podcast, and, you know, where I'm at with it, I experienced the same thing when I was younger and when I started my first business, and uh, I guess what I just say is, you know, people are different. I don't like it anytime somebody tries to put, you know, everyone in a box, and so I try not to do the same thing. So maybe for a lot of people, having your own business, going off on your own, as James Altucher might call it, choosing yourself is not the way to go. Okay, fine. Well, for some of us, it is. And 
often I think their, their admonition, their words of warning for us does come from a good place because these people usually do care about us. They have heard just enough horror stories of people who've tried things and failed. But while it often comes from a good place, it also comes from another place. You know, it is, there is something built in people, whether they realize it or not, that if you succeed by going off like that, it proves that their life may have been more interesting and more exciting and more productive. And they, a lot of these people would prefer to keep you in the farm, right? This podcast, the Borderless Podcast, is generally speaking not for people like that. It's for people who are interested in living outside of their borders. And often that means living beyond the expectations that maybe that group you were born into, whether it's friends or family, have for you. So, what was your first, would you say, big success in self-publishing? Tell us about that. Well, I, there's a couple, but I think the one that really sticks out to me the most and that was the most absolutely exhilarating was I self-published my first book on Kindle. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, when I, when I first did it, I, I was so embarrassed that I had to self-publish. I didn't tell anyone about it, right? <laughs> I, I didn't want anybody to know that I had to self-publish my book because, you know, four years ago, it, it's much different back, back then. I mean, even just four years ago, there was this huge stigma around self-publishing, and it was very not a cool thing to do, right? And today, it's, it's changed quite a bit, and you know, I'd say it's very the minority of people today that, that still hold that viewpoint. But back then, the majority of authors and publishers and, and people in the industry thought, you know, if you self-publish, you're a loser, basically. So I didn't tell anyone. But what I did is I logged back in my account a month later. I checked my sales, and I saw I had 13 book sales that first month. And I was jumping up and down in my chair. <laughs> I was so excited. I was hooting and hollering. And I was telling my fiance, oh my God, look what happened. You know, like I was just so excited that I sold 13 books because I knew immediately, look, if I can sell 13 books without telling a single person about what I've done, imagine what I could do if I treated this like a business and really focused on it and started marketing and promoting and started writing uh, consistently and turning this into a real career for myself. And that's what I decided to do. Um, and so now writing and publishing and now teaching other authors how to write and publish and, and market has really become kind of a second career for me. Um, and it, it's just, I love it. I mean, it's just so much fun when you get to wake up every day and, and do what you love to do. And honestly, I would do it if there was no money in it, I would, I would still do it because I love to do it. And to me, that's what success is. It's, it's waking up every day excited about what I'm doing, what I'm working on, and the life that I'm living and the work I get to do. And I think when you when your work becomes a privilege to do and not a chore or obligation, that to me is what success is. Uh, that is so good to hear. We're talking with Tom Corson Knowles, entrepreneur and author on the Borderless Podcast. We're going to take just a moment to thank one of our sponsors, but when we come back, we're going to talk about Uh, the mission of TCK Publishing, that's his company, and how it is that they can help you with your self-publishing success. Talk about uh, some other things about maybe what success means for Tom Corson Knowles and recommendations that he has for you. Today's Borderless Podcast is being brought to you by the Condescending Group, the world's number one resource for inflating your self-esteem through pooping on others. There was a must-read article that appeared on the homepage of the Condescending Group's website this morning. Remind us how bad it's been in times past when the voice of progressive statism was quashed in a terrible display of cultural bigotry. Yes, while things have improved considerably in recent times, we mustn't forget yesteryear when people were laughed at and ridiculed for their belief in an ever-growing nanny state. So the thing the Condescending group wants you to remember is that while you may think it best to be more open-minded and understanding of those who disagree with them in full awareness of how it used to feel to be ridiculed it isn't no the fact is it's proper and right for us to howl scream and mock freedom-minded persons for their views for one simple and obvious reason we are right and they are wrong double standards are fine just so long as you're right And they are. So let's get it straight. For the condescending group's collectivist socialist followers, criticism is bigoted and small-minded. But for those who disagree with them, it's the most noble, decent, and funny thing you can do. The condescending group, we care more than you. Okay, so we're back with Tom Corson Knowles, entrepreneur and author on the Borderless podcast. Uh, Tom has a company called TCK Publishing. It is the premier ebook publishing firm that's leading the industry in providing advanced marketing support for its clients. And uh, so why don't we talk first of all, Tom, what was the mission or what is the mission of TCK Publishing? 
So our mission is to help every single one of our clients earn a full-time income from their royalties from books. And so, and, and so what it's really about for me is, is helping authors turn their writing into a career. Because I think there's this, this huge mentality that we have, uh, especially in America, I've found, uh, this like starving artist mentality, you know, that, that, you know, in order to be an artist, to be an author, to be a writer, you have to be broke, you have to be poor. And, you know, the funny thing is, it, if you look at reality, it's the furthest thing from the truth, because, you know, look at like uh, J.K. Rowling is a billionaire from one book series, you know, and yeah, she's someone who stands out. But there's many, many people who have become multimillionaires from writing books uh, and more and more of them now with self-publishing are doing it much and much faster um, but this whole idea that you have to be a starving artist is, is complete BS, basically. And you can earn a full-time income, a serious income, even become wealthy through uh, writing books, through really any form of art. But the thing it comes down to is, is getting your products, uh, your books, the books and art, those are products, getting your products into the hands of people who love them and, and, and enjoy them and really value from them. And that's what the key is. And so, and that's all about marketing, you know, and there, and that's 80% of success of being an author is, is all about marketing. You know, you can be a great writer, but if no one knows who you are, you're not going to sell a lot of books. No one's going to know who you are. Fantastic. All about marketing. He said it there. So how is it that you and TCK Publishing can help improve someone's self-publishing success? How do you do it? Well, there's a couple things we do. So I actually have a, educational company as well. So we do all kinds of educational videos and training. So we actually teach you how to self-publish. And so what happened was when I had my first success in my books, uh, I was doing so well so quickly that I had all these people, authors, you know, writing me, emailing me, how did you do it? How do you make so much money? How do you sell so many books? And I started getting the same questions over and over again. So I decided I would create some videos and post them on YouTube and answer these questions. And the videos were so successful that people said, hey, why don't you create an entire video course on this? So I created a video course. We've had over 13,000 people now go through the video course on, on how to self-publish on Kindle. And the funny thing is that like almost half the people that completed that course basically emailed me at the end and said, Hey Tom, I love your course. It's really nice, but I don't want to do all that technical stuff. I don't want to do all that marketing stuff. So can you do it for me? And so that's really how TCK publishing, the publishing company came about was, was basically by request from my students who were saying, Hey, I love everything you're teaching. But at the end of the day, I just want to write, and that's all I want to do. And sure, I'll write some emails to my list, and I'll do some social media updates every once in a while. But I really just want to focus on writing. Can you do most of the rest of the marketing work for mm. me? And so that's how the company came about. I see. So you can teach people how to be a self-publishing success, or you can help them by filling in the gaps that they don't want to do themselves. Exactly, yeah. So the TCK Publishing, we're an actual publishing company, so... Uh, we publish the books for our clients. We do ebooks, we do audiobooks, we do paperbacks. Um, we do a lot of marketing support. We have tons of training videos and, and stuff to teach our authors, you know, how to do marketing. Because the thing is, you know, no one, no one ever asks when you publish a book who's the publisher. Mm -hmm. You know, like no one, no one cares who the publisher right. is. You know, readers want to connect with the author, they care who the publisher is. Mm -hmm. And because that's the case, it's very hard for a publisher to actually do um, marketing for a book, right? I mean, we can do <laughs> PR for a book. Um, we can do some social media on your behalf, but at the end of the day, you know, we can't write a blog post for the author. You know what I mean? Like we can't create a video for the author, you know, to connect with your audience. You have to do that yourself. You have to be the one who's connecting with your audience. Um, so we can give you the tools and the trainings and the resources to, to know how to do that. Um, <laughs> but other than that, there's not a lot that the publisher can do um, besides some promotional things and some SEO and and, you know, some help with, you know, getting the right book cover and the right description and the right title for your book. So it's actually going to sell well. Um, but at the end of the day, most of your success is going to come from marketing. And most of your marketing just has to be done by the author because that's the nature of the business. Um, so does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So can you share with us, have there been uh, any successes you've had with other authors? Yeah, I mean, we've had so many. Um, We've had a lot. We, we, I mean, we have clients, everything from nonfiction to fiction. Um, some artists we don't do, we don't do children's books anymore. So mm -hmm. we publish lots of children's books, and it, it's just a very difficult market. Mm -hmm. um, very few people actually buy children's books and ebooks right now. Um, and then, you know, when you, the costs of, you know, illustration and uh, printing for a hardcover, you know, full color children's book is much higher mm -hmm. than it would be for a regular book. 
it's just a very tough market. It's a very small market. You know, for instance, um, basically, if, you, if you're looking at ebook sales right now on Amazon, for every you know one children's book they sell, they're selling over a hundred romance novels, oh, right? Man. So if you're if you're a romance author and versus a children's book author, the children's book author uh, selling ebooks has to work a hundred times harder to sell the same amount of books, or have a and much just, more intelligent way to get books in their hands. You know, we actually I don't know if you heard the the podcast a while back. An old uh, friend of mine, his pen name is Jonathan Rand. The way that he got success with that, and he got started maybe, I don't know, 15 years or more ago, was by actually going into the schools. He gives talks about writing and creativity, encouraging kids to do that. So he, they'll put on a, a show there at the school, and then he'll leave the books at a local bookstore, and they will sell out. And he sold millions of books that way. But that's built right in to his whole marketing plan, and it's completely different than what we're talking about here. I can see why it would be so difficult if you didn't, if you didn't have that strategy. Yeah, I mean, it, see, that's the thing is with 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 authors, <laughs> you every author has their own strengths and weaknesses. And if you are like some authors are just incredibly shy. They don't want to do interviews. They don't want to do phone calls with journalists. You know, they don't definitely don't want to get in front of a high school or any kind of event mm. and speak to people mm-hmm. in public. Mm. And so, you know, it's very hard. It's like you know, it's selling, speaking in public is a great way to sell physical books. Mm-hmm. But if you're an author who says, you know, there's just no way I'm going to do that, then you know that strategy is not going to work for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the thing is, people have built huge businesses and authors have sold thousands and millions of books and, and so many different platforms from podcasts to YouTube to social media to public speaking to, uh, you know, webinars online. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, but I think the key is to find what, what are your strengths? Like, what is it that you love to do and you're really good at? You can do day after day after day. It's like for me, I love interviews. I love talking to people. I love video. Like I could do this every single day. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love to deal with it. Um, so it, it's it's finding what are your strengths when it comes to marketing and, and really capitalizing on those and focusing on those. Because the thing is, if, if you hate social media, you're not going to be successful with social media. I don't care how good of a social media coach you have. Mm-hmm. If you hate it, you're not going to do it consistently and you're not going to get the same results you would as if you someone who loved it. Mm-hmm. So focus on what your strengths are. And that's where you're going to sell the most books and have the most success long term. Mm, gotcha. So is it okay? Can you share for us some of the success stories you've either had yourself or helped create? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, a client called Dr. Veronique Desaulnier, mm-hmm. and she wrote an amazing book. It's called Heal Breast Cancer Naturally. And it's the only book she's written so far. And I'm hoping she's going to write more books because it's, it's a brilliant book. And basically, um, she's an amazing person, an amazing doctor, and she had breast cancer um, and healed herself uh, mm-hmm. using all natural methods and in her book, she talks about um, basically how anyone can heal, heal breast cancer naturally. Um, a lot about prevention, obviously, but also, you know, for someone who has it, you know, what do you do? Uh, some alternative methods other than, you know, the traditional medical route. So that book has done very, very well. And a big part of her marketing strategy is public speaking. So she does speak at conferences all the time. Um, she's done podcast shows, interviews. Um, but we do a lot of marketing online for her as well. And so the, the print copies have sold very, very well. The ebook copies have sold very, very well. And the audiobooks have done very well as well. Um, so she's earning thousands of dollars a month in, in royalties um, just from that one book, you know, which, and, and, and to give that some perspective, in the traditional publishing world, uh, in order to sell, to earn thousands of dollars a month in royalties, you'd have to sell like 25, you'd have to basically be a New York Times bestseller. You'd have to sell like 20,000 books mm-hmm. a month, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and, and there's very few books that stay on the New York Times bestseller list for, you know, years. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's basically a success that's unheard of in the traditional publishing industry, except for the A-list authors who are famous, you know, like Wayne Dyer. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Well, fantastic for her. That sounds like a great subject. And I can see why that would, uh, sort of light things up there. Any other, uh, success stories for us that you can share? Yeah. So I've got another lady, um, absolutely inspiring story. So she wrote her first novel 40 years ago. It was actually a trilogy. Uh, well, actually, originally it was just a very large novel. It was like over a thousand pages. And so she wrote the novel, completed it, tried to get it published originally, and just couldn't, just couldn't get a deal and basically gave up on her dream. I mean, she worked, she had a very successful corporate career, but gave up on her dream of being an author. And then about uh, two years ago, she contacted me and said, Hey, you know, I've got this book. I wrote it 40 years ago. Uh, you know, some agents at the time said it was promising, but, you know, never got published, never could get a deal done. Um, would you take a look? And so we did. And it, I think it's a great book. Um, and I said, you know, why don't we break it up into a trilogy? Cause it was so long and we published it. 
And now this lady in her 70s finally got her first book published and, you know, instantly became a number one bestseller on Amazon. The first book, as soon as, I think within five days, the first book was number one bestseller on Amazon. Second book came out within the first day, it was number one bestseller on Amazon. The third book came out within the first two hours, it was number one bestseller on Amazon. Wow. Uh, and she does not have a platform. She doesn't, she doesn't have a blog. She doesn't have a website. She doesn't do any marketing. She, it's just word of mouth for her. It's her friends and, and, and people who know her. Um, and then we do some, some marketing online for her as well, obviously. But um, you know, she, she's not doing marketing actively. And she's selling thousands of books every single month, um, doing very, very well, writing her historical novels. Um, and, it, you know, and she's, you know, every day now she's writing. Like, like she's writing like a full-time job in her 70s. She's like, Tom, like, I know I only have a little bit of time left, and I want to make every single moment count. And so, you know, she's cranking out, she's, she's due to crank out nine new novels this year. What nine a dream novels. for her. What a dream. I mean, imagine that 40 years goes by thinking, oh, it's never going to work, and then suddenly this great success. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, and, and to think about like, how many people like her, you know, have written books over the years and because self-publishing didn't exist because of the traditional publishing industry and the way the traditional publishing industry works is that less than 1% of people ever get their book published. So, you know, like how many people like her just totally gave up on their dream and never had the opportunity to get their book published and get it out in the world and, and share their story, their message with the world. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And now everyone has this opportunity to get your message out there. And it's up for, you know, obviously the readers will decide what they want to buy and what, what, what they love. But, um, you know, I think there's a lot of other authors like her out there with great books that readers would absolutely love. They just uh, had no chance to get, had no opportunity to get published before. And maybe today they still don't understand that that opportunity exists. Um, and so we're missing out on those, that next great book that's hidden in a bookshelf somewhere, hidden in a closet somewhere, you know? I'm sure you're right. So would you like to share just one more with us, Tom? Yeah, so we've got another client, uh, Mort Orman, Dr. Uh, his uh, author name is actually Doc Orman, MD. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a medical doctor, still in, in practicing, a very successful guy. Um, and he, uh, <laughs> his passion, his, his field is stress, stress relief. And he's mm-hmm. written... Um, he actually had a book that was traditionally published before working with us. Um, and it did pretty well when it first came out, but then it, you know, basically fizzled. The publisher doesn't, you know, they don't do much marketing and, uh, except for their, you know, the top 3% titles they can do a lot of marketing for, but other than that, they don't do much marketing. So it basically just kind of languished over the years. And, um, but he still had this passion to, you know, get his message out there and, and to help more people. So, um, we decided, uh, you know, working together and talking together about, you know, his goals and his interests and, and what he wanted to do as we decided, you know, why don't you just write some shorter books on different stress topics? So, uh, he wrote one book called stop negative thinking, um, became number one bestseller within the first uh, two weeks on Amazon It sold very, very well. Um, and it's just a powerful book. I mean, he's uh, the brilliance about this guy is that he has so many years of experience working with stress, working with psychology, uh, working with patients that he, really understands the human mind and how it works and how to really quickly make shifts that are going to completely change your perspective. And your perspective is going to determine how you feel, how you think, your emotions. And so his book on Stop Negative Thinking, I mean, I think it should be like required reading. Like everyone should be learning this in elementary school um, because those negative thoughts that we have can hold us back from, you know, so much success that we could have except we talk ourselves out of it. You know, our biggest, I, I really believe that our biggest obstacles in life is not it's not something outside of us. It's not some external. It's not someone saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure Jonathan Lockwood is not successful. You know, like no one, like no one, you don't have an arch nemesis. Like I don't have an arch nemesis, you know, like no one's trying to stop us. Uh, the person that stops us is us. It's our own inner voice, our own inner thoughts. So, uh, that book is a really powerful book. It's a life changer. I I highly recommend it called stop negative thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's been very, very successful. He wrote another book called the irritability cure. Incredibly successful. Um, that was a big one for me because I, I, one of my big weaknesses is, is anger, irritability mm. and reading that book. Um, and it's funny cause like, I get irritable about like, you know, s- silly things like, you know, I can't even give you an example, but just little things that should not even make me angry. Just, mm-hmm. you know, I get frustrated or flustered. Um, and you know, reading that book gives you really some really, and it's like, it's like 40 pages. I mean, you can read it like really fast, like in an hour or two hours, but it's life-changing information to give you the tools to shift your thoughts from that 
anger and irritability or any kind of negative emotion to something positive and, and more productive. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Dr. Orman's been very, very successful with his books, and uh, uh, and he's changed lives. I mean, he, like, you read the reviews for the irritability cure, and people, like, you know, marriages have changed, lives have changed from reading that one book, you know, in an afternoon. Uh, and that that's what inspires me, is to not just to publish stuff that, you know, just to make money, but stuff that's going to change people's lives. It's going to make people think that's going to make the world a better place. That's what I really want to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's my passion. We're, you're listening to the Borderless Podcast. We're talking with Tom Corson Knowles. He is the founder of ebookpublishingschool.com and also TCK Publishing. He's got multiple dimensions. You made a point earlier, Tom, that writing a book is almost like reading 300 books because of the research that you have to do, things like that. But just imagine what it must be to have a publishing company <laughs> and yeah. uh, to, to help other people with all of their books. It probably goes up exponentially there. So you get to talk about and think about and embrace a whole bunch of interesting ideas. And I can tell you're pretty passionate about some of the ones that people come to the table with. Um, so let's talk a little bit. You, you mentioned what success means. And so why don't I ask you right now, and do you mind my asking, it seems like you're a pretty young guy. How old are you, Tom? 27. 27 years old. Okay. So 27 year old Tom Corson knows what does success mean to you? You know, like I said before, it's just, it's, it's waking up every day, excited about your life, excited about what you're doing, what you're working on, whether that's work, business, whether it's relationships, whether it's surfing, whatever, it's hard to give a definition to it because I think it's, it's something that's fairly unique to everyone. And I don't want to just say, you know, it, it's one thing, but I think if you love your life, if you're happy with where your life is going, if you're excited about opportunities that you have when you wake up, I think that to me is what success is. And it's having great relationships. But see, the thing is, is the values are different for everyone. So some people might think, you know, their marriage is the most important thing in their life. And someone else might think, you know, that, uh, you know, their business is the most important thing in their life. And, and I think there's this kind of BS mindset that we have around success that, you know, you can only have one or the other, you know, you can, you can be rich, but you know, you can't have a happy marriage and be a good person and be loving and kind and peaceful. If you're rich, you know, like we have all these, I, I think, crazy beliefs around, uh, what success is, especially around money. Um, but I think you can have it all. You can have whatever you want to have in your life, whatever's most important to you. Um, and so I think what success is really about is, you know, finding out what is most important to you and, and making sure that you're focusing your time, your energy, your efforts on what's most important to you and not on stuff that, you know, society says you need, or, you know, someone else says that you, that says that you need, you know? Right. Yeah. And I guess maybe the question I, I meant to ask was what does success mean for you? You know what I mean? I mean, you've, you're living in Hawaii. What, have you been able to craft a life that makes you happy, that makes you feel fulfilled? You know, what does it mean for Tom Corson Knowles? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, my, right now, it's, it's, you know, having an amazing relationship with my fiance, um, you know, having like a real partnership in that relationship where, you know, we, we love each other amazingly. Like we work together, like our, our goals in life are on the same path. And, and the, really the, the kind of the mission that we have together is to make the world a better place. Uh, and for me, I mean, that involves so many things. I mean, I want to do things for the environment that we're able to do now financially to contribute, um, you know, and in our work with the publishing company to, to bring messages and stories that inspire the world and educate people and make the world a better place. Um, I mean, it's so hard to say because like, I, 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 I'm so in love with my life that like, there's so many things I'm doing, <laughs> you know, it, it, that's great. It, it's really hard to, to, you know, kind of nail it down and say it's this or that because it, it's so many things to me. And I think I'm, I'm kind of a weird person because I'm so creative that like, I've got like 10 projects going on at the same time. And so, you know, I tried, I tell people like I'm an author and publisher, but you know, like there's so much more to it than that. Um, but I don't want to just confuse people and, and people think that, oh, like, you're crazy, Tom. You're, you know, you can't possibly do all those things. But, uh, I mean, to me, life is short. And if I want to do something, I'm going to go ahead and do it. If it's important to me, I want to go do it. And, uh, you know, having the ability to do that is, is such a blessing. But, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, I've been doing this, my like, I've never had a real job. You know, like, I, when I was 16, I was working, uh, you know, landscaping for a summer, but I've never, I've never had a real job. I've never had a real boss because I, I realized early on that that was not going to make me happy. And so I've been blessed to have, 
you know, the financial freedom and, and the time freedom to do what I want to do with my life. And so to me, every day now, it's just like I wake up and, uh, you know, I never have to worry about, you know, what my work is or what I have to do or what's on my calendar because it's, it's what I want it to be. You know, like if I don't want to do this interview today, I just say, hey, I'm not doing the interview. I cancel, you know, or I don't schedule in the first place. You know, so I think having that complete control of your time, I mean, to me, it's like, it's like I'm almost take it for granted because it, it's so obvious, but I see so many people who don't have that, you know, who your whole calendar is basically consumed by either chores and tasks that you hate to do or work that you hate to do. And that's, that's to me, that's the opposite of success. Right. Wow. Well, okay. So you live in Hawaii. When did you move there? Why Hawaii? Why might it be right for someone else? You live on the island of Kauai, correct? Uh, uh, Kauai is actually a little island. It's not the big island. It's right. Kauai. Yeah. Um, so I moved here about three years ago. <laughs> and we, um, basically when I was growing up, my, my dream was Costa Rica. Mm. Yeah. That, and I don't know why I got Costa Rica in my mind, but it was just, that was my dream to move to Costa Rica. Um, somewhere tropical, you know, there's a, the blue zone there. So people live to be over hundred years old, mm-hmm. um, more than anywhere else on earth. Um, and, uh, that was my dream. And so I met this woman, amazing person, and we decided to get married and have a life together. And, uh, you know, like a couple months into our relationship, she said, Hey, I, I'm moving to Kauai. Um, <laughs> you can come with me or not. And I was like, I mean, it didn't take me long to decide, okay, let's go. You know, I want to go somewhere tropical. Let, let's go to Kauai. Um, and so the, the funny lesson from that for me is, you know, a lot of times we get so stuck in, on a goal or on a viewpoint. Like for me, it was Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to be willing to give that up to go to Hawaii, which it sounds crazy. Like, who, well, why would you not do that? You know, but a lot of times like in life, like we think that what we really want is, say, Costa Rica. But the truth is, I don't really care about Costa Rica. I don't know anything about it. I know some things about it, right? Like I don't, I, I don't, I'm not attached to Costa Rica. What I really wanted was a tropical uh, location with great air, clean water, natural beauty all around me and jungle. That's what, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, for me, a big lesson from that was like, you know, be willing to, uh, one of the teachers I had, he said something like, um, it's not the, it's not the form you want, it's the function, right? So don't be so attached to the form and, and the way that things come, you know, uh, but, but, but does it fulfill what you really want in your heart? And so for me, I mean, Hawaii is absolute paradise. I absolutely love it here. Couldn't yeah. be happier. Well, I, I so identify with that. And that I think really is something that a lot of people, it takes people a lot longer to figure out. You get stuck on this ideal concept of what life should be. And along the path, you find something a little bit better and you, you need to sort of wake up and say, Hey, yeah, this is basically the thing just in another form. So fantastic. That is really great. Do you have any books that you would like to recommend, books that you recommend most for people who are interested in having a successful life? Yeah, uh, Rules of the Rich, um, <laughs> I think it's a, a great book. I think, okay. I think you'll absolutely love it. Um, it's, it's basically, uh, you know, short chapters, lots of short chapters that I think everyone is going to inspire you, enlighten you, give you some new ideas on how to really find out what's important for you and, and live a successful life. Um, so it's called rules of the rich. It's available on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an audio book. It's an ebook. It's in paperback. So, uh, you can grab that on Amazon. Okay. Any other recommendations? Um, yeah. So another book is called schedule your success. Mm-hmm. And this book I think is super important if you're, if you feel too busy, right? Like if you feel like you're not getting ahead in life, like you're not achieving the results that you want to achieve, schedule your success it, to me it's like if it's not in your calendar it's not going to get done you know like this interview it's in our calendar mm-hmm. you know um when you book a plane flight to another country they tell you the day and time you have to be at the airport and the location you have to be at mm-hmm. right I, imagine if you bought a ticket to uh, another country and all they said was sometime in this month you have to be at the airport for your flight right like mm-hmm. you'd have to wait there for a month <laughs> right you know it'd be ridiculous Right. And so what would end up happening is it would never get done. You wouldn't go to the airport because you wouldn't know when to go and it wouldn't get done. And you'd never leave the country and you never go to that new place and explore. It's the exact same thing when you say, hey, I want to write a book or I want to start a business. Okay, when are you going to do it? You know, tomorrow is not a day. You know, tomorrow is the day that never comes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next year is is the year that never comes. But if you schedule in your calendar and say, hey, look, you know, next Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to start writing my book. Mm -hmm. Next Monday, you know, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to start my business. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, create my website or design my logo or call my first customer or whatever, you know. And 
putting things in your calendar is so crucial to your success. Um, but it goes way beyond that. I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of tools I share in the book about how to really be productive and get things done, but it really boils down to, you know, what are you, what is your priority? And if everything in your life is a priority, then you don't have any priorities. Mm. And that's the place I see a lot of people in when they're so busy and they feel like they're not getting work done is because they, they have so many priorities that nothing is actually a priority and they're not getting the most important things done. So the book is called Schedule Your Success. Uh, I highly recommend it. Okay. Thanks so much for that. So we like to end the Borderless podcast with a question for Tom Corson Knowles. It is for a young person, maybe not necessarily a young person, but for a person who wants to uh, maybe change their life, have their own business, have more freedom. What is the best advice you would give them? I mean, the first thing is to figure out why, you know, like, like why, like, why do you want that? Like, like, and get really clear and ask yourself why. So what I do is I have a notebook with me like all the time. Whenever I go out of the house, I always have a notebook with me. Um, and so what I do is I lock myself in my room and I call it thinking time. Okay. And I learned this from a guy, by the way, who's worth over a hundred million dollars. So, uh, and he credits it as being the, the number one tool for his success, um, is scheduling thinking time, uh, actually in your calendar, um, again, so making sure it actually gets done, right? So what you do is there are thinking times. You have a notebook, you lock yourself in your room, no distractions, no cell phone, no interruptions at all, whatever. Just you, a pen, a blank piece of paper with no interruptions. And you write down questions. And I've got, and I use Evernote to take notes and, and keep track of stuff. And I've got a list of hundreds of questions in Evernote that I use personally um, that I ask myself to help me create success in my life. Because, uh, you know, Tony Robbins says the, you know, the, the questions you ask are going to determine the results that you get in life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really true because, you know, we don't need better answers. We need better questions mm -hmm. because the questions are going to, the questions are ironically going to give you the answer. Like if you ask someone, how come you haven't been more successful, Jonathan? How come you don't have another million dollars? How come you don't, you know, have an even better relationship with your wife or family or whatever, right? You already know the answer. No one else can tell you that, right? Mm -hmm. You can hire a coach all you want, but you, no one knows you better than you know yourself. And uh, so when you write down these questions, so a lot of questions I ask is, okay, um, say you want to start a business, right? Okay, so, well, uh, you know, how can you, how can you bring in revenue? How can you bring in your first customer? How can you find your first customer? How can you increase your income today? What can you do right now that's going to help you increase your income? What can you do right now that's going to help increase, uh, add more customers to your business? So what can you do right now to add more value to your existing customers, your existing products and services? And it's just asking these questions that force you to think of answers that will take you where you want to go. So if you ask the right question, you're guaranteed to get answers that will take you where you want to go. It's just finding those questions for you that are going to get you there. All right. Fantastic answer. I love that answer. So, Borderless Podcast listener, what does success mean to you? Might it have anything to do with creating books or other products? Is there any reason you can't make a good full-time living from it? Is there any reason it has to stay a hobby? Well, Tom Corson Knowles can help you. He's the founder of ebookpublishingschool.com and also TC Key, uh, excuse me, and also TCK Publishing. So uh, we highly recommend you go to his his. What are the what are the websites where they can find you? Yeah, so ebookpublishingschool.com. There I've got the free video training course that shows you how to self-publish your books. Um, and literally by, by the end of the second video, you'll, ha you'll have your book live and published on Amazon um, if you're at that point when your manuscript is ready for that. Um, so that's ebookpublishingschool.com. And then the publishing company site is tckpublishing.com. And then the other thing we have is the Publishing Profits podcast show um, where we interview every week. We interview a best-selling author, entrepreneur, to talk about you know what's going on right now in the publishing industry and what's working right now for people. Um, so that's publishingprofitspodcast.com. Tom Corson Knowles, thank you for being on the Borderless Podcast. Yeah, thanks so much, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Borderless Podcast. What we'd like you to do is go to the borderlesspodcast.com site, click on the Join Now button. There's a few things that James Guzman is going to send to you. One of the things he'll get you is access to our private Facebook page. We'd like you to get involved in the conversation. Any questions for our guest, Tom Corson Knowles, today, feel free to let us know. Also, please find us on iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe. Thanks for joining us for the Borderless Podcast, traveling, investing, and living beyond borders.